um, Dr. Shedlovsky in his office and pretty much around the world, right? You're known as Dr. S? Pretty much so. <laughs> it's a little easier to say. But you've been very active in the neurodevelopmental optometry for most of your career, and you've developed and integrated some really unique therapies I'd like to talk about today and worked with surrounding providers. I know a ton of chiropractors that you've worked with um, and um, professional teams and stuff like that. You have an office in Plano, also in South Lake and Rockwell. Rockwall. Tell us just a little bit about you as a human being and as a doctor as well. Well, I'm glad to do that. Um, well, I've been in practice uh, 30 years now, which is kind of shocking to me every day. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, basically, I, I, I've, I've kind of come into this field because when I was younger, I had a lot of visual processing problems unbeknownst to myself. And when I was in my first year of optometry school, they were discovered. And, um, and what, what essentially I did is I, 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 the first person I fixed was myself. And then I said, oh, I can do this to help other people too. And started working with primarily with kids um, at, at, at the beginning, uh, uh, kids uh, who are having ADD, ADHD, or dyslexia, or, or autism. Um, and I started out kind of in that realm. And, and worked with many of those folks for, for a long time and really improved their visual skills, um, got them, uh, improved their balance, improved a lot of their overall capabilities, um, and most of all, they improved in school. Um, and, and that was really a wonderful thing. Um, and then ultimately, uh, about 15 years ago, um, I started treating patients with traumatic and acquired brain injury. Um, you know, anything from a concussion to stroke to uh, traumatic injury, um, and we started treating a lot of those folks. And then, um, and of course, with concussion being such an important subject, it's allowed me to get back into what one of my true loves, um, and that's sports vision and working with athletes and teams, things of that nature. So that's kind of how things have developed for me over the last 30 years. Um, that's and, awesome. Uh, I love your story as far as... Um, getting into this because you know you had some issues yourself but you didn't really discover that until you were in optometry school and uh, you kind of have teeth in the game and it sounds like you have a little idea from an emotional standpoint experiencing some things yourself as to what some of these people are going through but you i mean the passion that i've seen from you and i've been in your office but just your entire team, it's very, very obvious how um, your entire team from the gal that answers the phones to everyone is just so passionate and behind the whole, they, they buy into what you're doing and want to see the best for your patients too. And I think that is so awesome. Um, I want to talk a little bit about each of these things that you kind of listed out. Let's start with um, the children and kind of struggling in school. What kind of if we can just kind of repeat a little bit, what kind of conditions is that? Because a lot of what you say um, and the types of things that you treat, it does tend to overlap quite a bit with um, the side effects of chiropractic too. And I think that they can work great hand in hand together. And even pediatricians, you take up some of the things that they don't focus on. So I think this is incredible. Um, what kind of conditions do children do they come see you because they have these conditions or um, are, is it for something else and a bunch of children just happen to have these kind of conditions that come see you? Tell us why, what, what are the reasons children come see you? Well, let's start with the obvious ones, uh, the ones that are most typical eye issues. Um, obviously, nearsightedness or farsightedness or astigmatism, but then you also have strabismus, which is an eye turn, um, and we also have uh, a situation where you have a lazy eye or an ambly or amblyopia. So those are the most common visual elements. But also we have many people who have learning related vision problems. In other words, they're having difficult time reading or writing in the classroom. Um, and oftentimes there's a visual element to that. So what we find out is um, sometimes they have what we call a vision related learning problem. And oftentimes it involves other areas like tracking and eye teaming and focusing or accommodation that can be a big piece of that puzzle. And we can work on enhancing and developing those skills. And then certainly 
when when you take it deeper than that, um, obviously autism spectrum is something that I've been involved with for over 20 years. I always joke it's I, I, I treated autistic kids before it was popular, um, and. Uh, <laughs> And so basically what, what we're doing in those situations is we're working on developing their vision skills because oftentimes in the autism population, um, what we find is that um, uh, we, we have a, a collapse of peripheral vision. And if we can enhance uh, and, uh, the peripheral vision, oftentimes we can get the child to be more functional, uh, have better concentration, um, we see less uh, balance issues in co-walking. Um, mm -hmm. you know, better eye contact, things of that nature. Certainly, we're not making the autism go away, but what we are doing is enhancing their lives and enhancing their capabilities. And their function, right? Absolutely. And I think that's something that the parents could 100% appreciate that as well, because any little bit is helpful. And your office is actually um, equipped to handle these kiddos too, Correct. Absolutely. In fact, I have one exam room that is devoted to autism spectrum disorders. Um, uh, we, we developed it specially. It has like mats on the floors and has stuffed pillows and it has, um, <coughs> excuse me, it has, uh, you know, a little tunnel and we can do all sorts of testing in that room just to kind of get them away from a general exam room environment. Yeah, I was so impressed when I did the walkthrough with your office and that room in particular. Um, it, it was impressive from a doctor's standpoint, but trying to put myself in these kids' shoes, but also in the parents' shoes, it just filled my heart up with, I mean, it, uh, your love and passion for what you do and for these kiddos is incredible. And before I go on to some of the other questions, any of our viewers, if you have questions that you want to ask Dr. Shadlovsky, Feel free to write those questions down in the comments. This is an opportunity to have like a free, it's not a free consultation by any means, but if you have some questions, feel free, write those questions down. Anything related to vision, especially neurology, anything that we're talking about, whether it's ADD, ADHD, autism, um, if you have questions about your um, children's vision, anything like that. Um, so we've hit on some of the autism stuff. What? Just for some of the parents um, that just have kids that are just running around, act, you know, doesn't seem like anything's wrong. What are some signs that they might look out for um, that, that maybe they should bring their children in to come see you uh, just for an evaluation even? Well, certainly if they tend to cover an eye or they te their eyes tear a lot when they're reading or they have um, they, they get close to the television um, or if they're complaining, they're having trouble with handwriting or having trouble with um, uh, com comfortably uh, uh, with sports, different sports activities, things of that nature mm -hmm. are certainly t uh, tip offs that they're having a, a vision issue. Um, the other thing, big thing is headaches. Uh, headaches, certainly if the child's having headaches after reading particularly, those are some things we can mm -hmm. uh, typically address. Um, so those are right. some of the headaches things are that not come to normal the top of my for, mind. Right, and headaches are not normal for anybody, and especially kids as well. Yes, I agree. So can you see some of the comments at all? Uh, let me see if I can pull up some of the comments here. No, let's write a comment here. Uh, I saw one question about keratoconus pop up. Um, yes, the, the, the asking is that only correctable by surgical intervention? Well, you know, I think I think keratoconus is an interesting topic, um, and what it is is it's a bowling or, or a, forward, a forward movement of the cornea. It's a pathological change, and what we find <laughs> certainly contact lenses are have been the treatment of choice uh, for for many many years for that. It can give you comfortable and clear vision um, utilizing contacts, and there's usually special types of contacts to do that. Uh, you can use a rigid, a certain types of rigid contact lenses or what we call hybrids, which are rigid in the middle and soft on the edge. Or we can use what we call scleral lenses. And that's what I've been use, using mostly as of late, is using a scleral type of contact lens that is a hard, rigid surface to, to create a new, essentially a new corneal surface for the individual. And it gives them comfortable, clear vision. But at some point, uh, in some patients with keratoconus, they, they may ultimately need a corneal transplant. And in that case, we can refer them to uh, for exceptional services for corneal transplantation if that's necessary. 
Awesome. Thank you for answering that question. You hit on something else I want to chat about, and that's specialty lenses. You do that in your practice as well, correct? Quite a bit. Tell, tell us more about that, because the layperson doesn't really know like what that means or where to start, unless I well, guess they need them. Yes. Well, specialty lenses, they come in all shapes and sizes. Obviously, we can use certain types of contact lenses, like I just mentioned, as a specialty lens. <clears throat> um, certainly, we can consider, uh, we also use as lenses for therapy. So we can use ophthalmic lenses or glasses lenses, and we use that as a therapeutic intervention. So instead of having just the corrective power, which is your nearsightedness or farsightedness, we can use lenses as passive therapies uh, by, by in, uh, putting in certain prismatic elements or occlusion elements, um, something along those lines, or tints, and those can be therapeutic in nature and help our patients get better. Um, we qu quite frequently do this with many of our patients who are having learning-related vision problems, uh, many of those on the autism spectrum, but then again, also to our patients who have had traumatic and acquired brain injury. Um, so we can use all sorts of types of, um, or, uh, you know, different lens treatments also that can be beneficial to help that individual uh, as well. Awesome. And you have a huge, beautiful display of all kinds of things for people to try on and that sort of thing, too. Um, I just had somebody actually text me, because I guess they don't want to show it on, on Facebook, I guess. But um, their little one um, was born with some weakness in the eyelid, and they're starting to see it as they're starting to walk um, in the feet and the toes. Um, and along with chiropractic care, um, what kinds of things or, or would an appropriate referral to you be a good adjunct to their team? Well, I, so, I, I know think you need to do a full evaluation for sure, yeah. but I think certainly what you have to do when you have a, an eye, a droopy, you know, droopy eyelid or something like that, there is a risk for amblyopia, so we have to evaluate for that, or risk for an eye turn, and you have to evaluate for that. And then beyond that, obviously, is um, look at the visual spatial aspects. Um, are they having problems with some visual spatial skills uh, because of that? And, and how, how is it affecting overall balance? And how is it affecting um, other capabilities that they may have? So um, obviously without, you know, um, obviously without doing a complete evaluation, hard to, hard to speak of that in an individual exactly. basis. But there's a lot of sure. things that come to mind to take a look at for sure. Awesome. So some of you that are just joining in, we've got some new people. Um, we're talking to Dr. Shidlovsky. He's located in the Dallas area. He's got three offices in Plano, South Lake, and Rockwall. And he is an optometrist. He's very active in the neurodevelopmental optometry. And he does, he's developed and integrated quite a bit of unique therapies. He works with a lot of uh, physicians all around the area. He speaks all around the world. People actually come see him all around the world. I saw the map with the little pegs um, where people have seen you from. So that was pretty cool to watch or to see. Uh, we've been talking about children and his aspect of care for the children and the special needs population, which you're actually going to be volunteering for the Special Olympics coming up. Is that right? Uh, yes, uh, we do Special Olympics um... Yeah. First week of May, it'll be in uh, San Antonio this year, <coughs> and yes. um, we're looking forward to that. This is my, this will be my gosh twelfth year, I think. I'm a clin I'm the clinical director for the uh, Special Olympics Opening Eyes program, which basically we give free eye examinations to uh, all the athletes that are participating, um, and they get free glasses. Um, uh, That's and, incredible. Uh, and it's, fun. it's it's an international program. It's done all over the world. Um, and then we have some major sponsors like Essilor here in Dallas um, is a major sponsor. They do all the lenses and all the glasses um, for, for people. And we have Sapelo who does all the frames and everything's donated. And uh, it's just a wonderful event. Last year we did about 500 eye exams in two days at that event. That is incredible. I don't know how you get done all that you do from um, still teaching and speaking around the world and doing these kind of events. Oh, it's getting windy here. Anyway, so uh, just thank you for your passion and really serving our communities and the world. We've been talking about children. 
Um, and we went into some uh, special needs. His office is fully equipped, even the specialty lenses that they do. Um, if you're interested in that, go back and watch. If you still have questions, please ask them now. Uh, we started talking about athletes as it relates to Special Olympics, but you also do a lot with um, very competitive athletes as well, correct? Tell us more Absolutely. about Absolutely. what we... benefit people have with that. Well, certainly, you know, when you're working with a child who has an issue or you have working with, uh, with a um, patient who's had a, who's had a traumatic brain injury, obviously you're working on a system that is both functioning below normal level and you, what you, our goal is to take it to normal level. However, when we work with an athlete, um, that is a person that probably has pretty normal vision, but what we need to do mm -hmm. is elevate its skill level to an elite level. And so that's really what we focus on is taking the almost the same, some of the same techniques that we even use. Um, we, we're using some of the same techniques, but what we're doing now is we're, we're loading that, tech, that, that's, that skill and we're loading that technique level to a point where it, it elevates their level and elevates their skill to a, to, to a very, very high level. Awesome. Can you give us an example of someone you've recently worked with? Like what, um, what was the difference in their game or what sport is it? Well, we've worked with all sorts of sports. Um, uh, I, we work with the Allen Americans, which is the ECHL team uh, in, in Allen, Texas. Um, that's, that's ice hockey. And we've worked with that team. I think we just completed our sixth season working with them. And we work with several of the athletes throughout the season to improve their skills get them to a higher level uh we work with um uh we're working right now with the texas revolution which is the um arena football team and we did a full evaluation for all the players before the season started and we'll do some more with them as the season progresses um i've worked with some of the fc dallas players i've worked with um you know uh I, i've also worked uh with um athletes that just come in here and they want to enhance their skills so if they're a golfer if they if they if they play hockey if they play baseball baseball is particularly a visually demanding sport if you can yes. think of the process of hitting um, we work I work with many baseball players college level baseball players high school level baseball players um, do you, uh, do you ever find that do you ever find that people have been I mean if you're working with college players and uh, uh, professional players I mean they've done pretty good so far with what they've got right um, do they come see you? not thinking they have an issue, but come see you just to make sure if there's anything they could do to up their game? Well, think about it. If, if, say you're a high school athlete and you want to play college athletics, what, what, what is going to give you that edge? Okay. That's what you have to think about. If going in and, and um, working on a skill will give you that edge, be, be from the vision side, that edge might get you um, to, onto a team in the, at the college level, or it might get you onto uh, make make you a starter instead of a backup player. So, right. anything you can do the edge. Now, when I work with the minor leaguers, um, like like the Allen Americans, for instance, what's their goal? Their goal is to get to the AHL and the NHL. So, um, if I can give them that edge that can get them up to that next level, that's a huge step forward. Awesome. Well, thanks. And one last topic I'm curious to discuss, unless you have something else, is a traumatic injury, stroke, and something that's very dear to the chiropractic world also is concussions. Um, and I want to bring some of these up because a lot of people have experienced these things or their parents have. Um, you're the expert on it from your uh, specialty. And a lot of my followers are chiropractors. And so I want to show them how we can build our professional team utilizing you and people like you uh, to put the patient first and have a, just a solid team for our patients. So what is your role in traumatic injury, stroke, concussion, those kind of things? Well, the first thing to understand is that you have uh, about 90% uh, and this is statistically uh, uh, followed, 90% of all patients or in all individuals who have concussions have visual processing issues. Um, that's a large percentage of, of them. And, so, right. and some, sometimes, like anything else with concussions, sometimes these things resolve on their own in a short, short time. But oftentimes, the visual symptoms um, – that you have with concussions are, are one of the more, most common, that and vestibular issues. 
are the most common post-concussive yeah. symptoms that last for months upon months, years upon years in some. And those, are the, those symptoms can be worked on and resolved pretty easily um, through, a, through optometric vision rehabilitation. And, um, and this co corresponds to what some of the chiropractors are doing, the neurochiropractors particularly are doing. Um, it corresponds to some of the things we work with physical therapists and occupational therapists quite frequently. Uh, physiatrists, and we try to improve their skills, um, their visual skills, but particularly in concussion, as I said, I see people coming in two years, three years after their concussion, and they're still having symptoms, but they didn't attribute it to anything, and largely the reason why is because the symptom that they're having is kind of hard to identify as a visual issue. Uh, they're, they're having it balance is. Issues. Yeah, they're having balance yeah. issues. They're having difficulty with reading. They're getting headaches. Um, they're having difficulty tracking. They're having difficulty driving. I mean, driving such a huge thing. Yeah. Um, this and... is this topic is very dear to me because I've had multiple concussions, and the last concussion was the biggest doozy. Um, it was actually classified as a TBI, traumatic brain injury, and. The other concussions, I mean, the obvious symptoms seem to have subsided, but um, it's compounding, isn't it? Not everything just goes away and you're in the clear, correct? That is correct. A lot, there's a, quite a few, uh, quite a high percentage, higher than you might think, percentage of people <laughs> that have post-concussive symptoms. So, a hundred percent, yeah. So we, we and it's it's been estimated up to forty percent have post-concussive symptoms. And that really needs to be looked at. And certainly that's something that could be remediated. You know, the, the problem is that people go into their new normal. This is my new normal life, so this is where I'll be. But there are things right. that we can do to, to, to elevate that level and get them out of that new normal and create a newer normal, which is uh, uh, operating at a higher level. I agree, and I already need to come see you based on this conversation, uh, mainly because I have overcome pretty much most of the biggest obstacles. I mean, I could not walk backwards without falling over. I couldn't bounce a ball. I couldn't say my ABC skipping a letter every other time. You know, I had some tough things and still to this day, I've got some <laughs> visual, like my eyes like shake and wobble sometimes, you know, and sometimes I do lose my balance. And um, I'm, I'm wondering like, is my blood pressure too low? Because that's also an issue with me. But um, if any of you have experienced concussion, if you've got questions, this is the expert. He uh, uh, specializes in neurodevelopmental optometry. So if you have questions about a concussion or symptoms you're still experiencing, or if you need to go see him, if you want to go see him and just get evaluated, he's got offices in Plano, which is off of, off of Preston, also in uh, Rockwall and South Lake as well. The Kairos, the uh, PTs, the OTs, the pediatricians that are listening and want to be connected with him, shoot me a direct message or him a direct message and we'll get you connected as well. Um, I want to know a little bit more about you on a personal level. What makes you human? What do you like to do for fun? Well, believe it or not, I, I still, even at my, my ripe young age, um, I play ice hockey <laughs> twice a week. Um, oh, my goodness. And, and, and still enjoy doing that. Um, I, you know, I, I enjoy uh, getting out, playing with my dogs. My, um, my, I've been married for quite a while, 33 years, so I hang out with my wife. Congratulations. And my, my kids are all over the country, so I love to travel and go see them. And, but, but I also love travel. Um, the other thing I love to do and is is I love to teach, and so I, I as you mentioned before, I, I lecture. I have opportunities to lecture all over this country and all over the world, and uh, and teach what I know and help help that uh, help uh, doctors kind of get up to snuff on on all this on the subject matter. We also have yeah. a residency program in my office, so we have a resident um, optometrist that spends a year here. We have. We also have some student doctors who are in the fourth year of optometry school that spend time here in our office. So teaching is something I love to do as well. That's awesome, and you're you're oftentimes at uh, seminars yourself, learning. Always the teacher and always the student. Always giving back and always you know getting more information on the latest cutting edge stuff. So 
Thanks so much for what you do. We've got some folks listening from Canada that loves hockey and dogs as well. Lori, good to see (laughs) you. Speaking of hockey, is that how you got introduced to Dr. Matt Rayner and Dr. Brandon Nutt? Well, I know both of them love hockey. Um, uh, They do. I actually actually didn't get introduced to them that way. I got, I, 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 through some of the functional neurology circles, I, I met them, and we've talked many times. But it just so happened that all three of us love hockey, so it works out real well. <laughs> that is, that's awesome. All right, and they're in our Wellness Doctor Network as well. All right, so we are wrapping up here. If any of you have any questions, we've discussed children and struggling in school. We've discussed autism. We've discussed um, some issues with birth, uh, traumatic injury, stroke, concussions, athletes, um, special needs, specialty lenses, um, and who Dr. S is um, on a personal level. He loves dogs and hockey and travel. So if any of you have any questions, please uh, let us know right now because we're just minutes away from ending this. Dr. Shadlovsky, do you have anything else you'd like to talk about or add before we conclude? Yeah. When we deal with patients like this, no matter what the situation, the other area that becomes interesting is you know nutrition and nutrition is a love of mine as well and so we we, we want to look at their their nutritional status and we will we even go down to the to point of genetics doing a genetic nutrition testing um we want to see what your body's able to handle so uh we have um a, a system where we can do a cheek swab send the add out to a lab and get a genetic report back and we can from from there we can determine what, what your body needs genetically and treat it from that perspective. That is incredible. And you, is this part of the acceptance process into your practice? Does everybody get this? No questions asked. Or, or is this a case by case basis on what's applicable and it's what the patient's wanting basis. as well? Yeah, this is a case by yeah. case basis. We'll see. We'll, we'll look at the individual, see what they're doing. Uh, of course, we're going to ask them about what their, their nutrition is like as part of our initial case history. And once we understand that, then we kind of say, okay, is this someone that might benefit by some, a testing like this or, or not benefit by it? Do you find it difficult whenever the kids or the patient um, trying to get the parents to make nutritional changes in the household? Do you feel like you have to treat the parent and the kid? Is that a little more difficult? I would say that's quite frequent, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's been mine as well. Uh, Kaylee Stone says, oh, my goodness, I can't wait to meet you and help with my son. Oh, awesome. Uh, she was the one it. I was – yes, uh, she's got an uh, – he had a birthday in February. So about 14 months, so uh, – old is the age of her son. So, well, awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me and taking time out of your busy day and blocking this time off your schedule so that we can increase and expand um, how you can help people and let more and more and more people know about um, how they can get help with these specific types of things. So thanks so much for joining us and we'll be doing this again. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. Thanks, Dr. Sidlovsky. Have an awesome day. Bye now.